presenting. Yep, just to turn off your camera and mute yourself. Thank you. Welcome to the Stockton Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of the diff, uh, many sessions happening, so be sure to sign up for additional sessions. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within a week at the same website where you registered. And now I'll let it over to our first presenter, the University of South Florida. I do apologize. I'm sorry, my computer was lagging a little bit, but hello. Good evening. My name is Danielle Castro, and I am the out-of-state admissions recruiter advisor for the University of South Florida. Um, so just a little bit of general information regarding USF. Um, we are spread across three campuses, which is going to be St. Pete, Sarasota, Manatee, and our Tampa campus, which is our most, most known campus. Um, so as you'll see on the screen, it's just a little bit of information regarding um, just general info about us. So we were uh, founded in 1956. Um, as a younger university, we have risen pretty quickly among the ranks. Um, and so we are proud to say that we're one of the large public institutions within Florida with over 50,000 students across all three campuses and about 37,000 students being um, undergrad students. So we do have master's and doctoral students on campus with our other undergraduate students too. Although we're a large university, we do still try and keep the attention individualized and personalized for each of their students and their academic experience. So that's why our faculty to student student ratio is going to be about 21 to 1 with our class average sizes being about 33 students. Um, we do have several different areas where students can study from um, with over 200 programs that students can major or minor in um, and it opens up a really big um, opportunity for our students, areas maybe they haven't thought about using before as, as their academic program, um, as far as what they want to do as a career path, um, as well as we have a lot of students that will do double majoring plus a minor. Not that you have to do that right out the gate, but if you guys know that there are certain programs you want to put hand in hand, we do have that opportunity. Um, among our diverse programs, we also have a very diverse campus. Um, so Tampa Bay in general is a very up and coming city and it's somewhat of a melting pot. We have a lot of students from all over the states and all over the globe. USF specifically has all 50 states, all US territories and over 140 countries represented right on campus. Um, so again, it opens a lot of opportunities for our students. Um, they will meet individuals from places that they've never heard of um, and places that maybe they wanna travel to at some point. So it's really neat being able to immerse themselves in that experience right on campus. Um, going along with that, we do have a lot of things for our students to get involved on campus, having over 700 clubs and organizations. So we do have everything ranging from academic and professional networking clubs and organizations. We do have intramural and club sports along with Greek life. So we do have sorority and fraternity life on campus. Um, and we even have stuff as random as the Chocolatiers Club. So we have students that get together once a month and like to try chocolate from around the globe. So if there's not something currently on campus for you guys, it's a very easy process uh, to start a new club. You just find 12 peers. You guys have all a common interest or passion that you want to start a club for. And that's as simple as that. <laughs> um, so again, a lot of stuff for you guys to do on campus. We also have 17 division um, one sports teams that you guys are able to go and either if you're looking to try out for the teams, you would speak with the coaches, but if you're looking to go and attend the games, they are all free um, for you guys to be able to go to. And we do have busing to some of the events. So for instance, our football team does play at the NFL Tampa Bay Buccaneer Stadium for all of our football games. Um, and so you guys would be able to get bused from campus to the stadium itself. Um, Going along with that, there's a lot of stuff for you guys to get involved with, but there's also a lot of stuff in the area for you guys to be able to do. We do have a transportation system on campus. There's a transportation in the Tampa Bay area that our students can utilize. And we do have a lot of stuff that they can go see. Like we have a theme park that's five minutes from our campus. The shuttle on campus can actually take them to it. And it does have water rides, roller coasters, 
They'll have um, food and wine festivals and they even have Hollow Scream, which is gonna be their Halloween event this year for students to go and participate in. 45 minutes from the beach. We have the Museum of Science and Industry across the street from us. They've had really cool exhibits on Egyptian culture, the human body, and even crime scene investigation. So again, a lot of different things. Um, and as much as students can get involved around the area as far as activities, we are also a top tier research institution, which means that we offer research in every single program across all three campuses and as early as freshman year. Same thing for our internships. So you guys are able to do all of that very early on. Um, for our students that are participating in research, you would be able to get published for your research before you even graduate from your undergraduate program, which is pretty cool. Um, and again, we do offer it for all programs. So one that we like to mention that we're really proud of is that we have our engineering and dance department that collaborate together and they are currently creating the dancing wheelchair. Allows individuals with movement of their torso to glide across stage. So again, a lot of really cool opportunities for our students. Um, going along with that, just a little bit of information for you guys. Um, we do have scholarship opportunities for our out-of-state students. So if you guys are looking to find out if we have financial aid availability, we do. Um, we have three different tiers where you guys will have to meet both the, the high school GPA, um, we, we recalculate them. So recalculated high school GPA, and then either or on the test scores, um, so you don't have to get both SAT and ACT, just one of them. But as long as you're meeting both one of the test scores and your GPA, then you would qualify for them. Um, I do have the QR code on there. You guys can scan it. It'll take you right to our website to get more information about USF. But I also have our general contact information on there if you want to take a picture of it. Below that, you're going to see that we do have four simple steps for you guys as far as application process. It's just going to be your application, which we're on Common App, Coalition App, and our Visual Center VZ application right on our webpage, um, along with your application fee, official transcripts, and official test scores. Um, USF is part of the Florida State University system, and the Florida Board of Governors is still requiring that we um, take test scores. So please keep that in mind when you are applying. We will need official ACT and SAT test scores. Um, the nice part is, is that we do not need a completed application from you guys until January. So for those of you that have had test dates canceled right now or are going to be taking them um, next week or next month, that is perfectly fine. You have plenty of time to get all of that great stuff in. Um, lastly, I just do want to mention we have an open house coming up. Uh, this Saturday, October 24th from 10 to 1, um, it will have everything from admissions, College of Business, College of Nursing, um, pretty much every single program that we offer. We will have a 30 minute session for each of those so that you guys can hop in, get some good info right from the experts and also be able to ask questions. I do have the link there, but the easiest way to register for it is going to be to hop on um, the USF events page and it will be the first event that you can can register for. It is free of okay. charge. So you guys can go ahead and jump in and do that. Thank you so much, Danielle. Um, and now I'll hand it over to our next presenter um, who will be um, presenting um, this evening. Um, I just want to make sure that it's uh, the University of Tampa. Um, just a reminder, if we can actually, if you have any questions for the presenters, um, please feel free to drop those in the chat. And um, also, if you have questions specifically to a specific institution, please add the institution's name to the chat as well. Um, so I'll hand it over to the University of Tampa. Hi, thank you so much. Thank you guys for having us tonight and joining us. My name is Hagen Treadway. I'm an admissions counselor and graduate here at the University of Tampa. And I'm excited to talk to you guys about UT tonight. So to get us started, um, the University of Tampa is a private, independent, mid-sized liberal arts university, and we sit right in the heart of sunny downtown Tampa. So first you had USF, now you're getting UT, you're kind of getting the Tampa special here. Uh, we have about 9,600 students total, so are right in that mid-sized range of colleges and universities. And we are NCAA Division II for athletics, and you guys can find us in US News and World Reports, top tier regional universities south. 
But uh, kind of looking at UT, so we emphasize a few different things. So experiential education, your coursework is designed to be as hands-on as possible and give you kind of as many real world experiences as possible as early as you can. So here in the pictures, you can see students working in things like our nursing skills lab, our financial trading center, um, our black box TV recording studios. Um, so kind of give you an idea of what that looks like for us. We want students to be doing the things that they anticipate doing in the real world as they graduate. We also emphasize small class size, um, kind of with personalized attention. So we know that's what students are looking for as they come to a medium sized university. So our average class size is about 20 to 22 students in it. And 96% uh, of our classes have fewer than 40 students. And we don't employ any graduate teaching assistants. So you're always being taught by somebody with a graduate degree at the very least. 90% of our faculty have the terminal degree in their field. So you're usually learning from a full-time faculty member with us. And that gives them the time to pay attention to our students to kind of have that individual report with them and really start to kind of build relationships. We also really emphasize undergrad research. Um, so we fund undergraduate research really heavily. Our school is predominantly undergraduates and we want all of our students to be as involved in research as early as possible and as often as possible. Uh, so here at UT, we sit on one 110 acre subtropical campus, which kind of gives students that ambiance of a large campus feel where you never need to leave campus if you don't want to. But as soon as you do want to, the things that you kind of want are right on your doorstep, right? So you get all the benefits of being in an urban setting, such as close proximity to internships, cultural experiences, job opportunities. So lots of things going on in the Tampa area. And we're kind of right in the heart of it. We're just one mile from the ocean. Um, we're 20 minutes from the nation's best beaches. And it's an average yearly temperature of 72 degrees. So it's not such a bad place to kind of spend the next four years. Uh, but more generally, UT has over 200 different academic programs. So we're going to study pretty much everything except for engineering. We have over 300 different campus organizations. So lots of different things to do. Whatever you do at the high school level, we probably do at UT at the collegiate level. And like I said earlier, we are NCAA Division II for sports. We play over 20 different sports. We won three national championships last year for baseball, volleyball, and beach volleyball. So if you like those kind of sunshine sports, we're probably a good place to do it. And then UT has a very diverse campus. Um, so we get students from all 50 states and over 130 different countries. So we kind of serve as a downtown hub for students to come from all over the world and live and learn for us. Um, like I said, over 200 different academic programs, but we'll often get students who are really interested in things like marine science, biology, nursing, biology, international business, finance, cybersecurity, psychology, kind of things like that. Uh, and for sports, we're usually kind of perennial powerhouses for things like baseball, volleyball, swimming, and lacrosse. Um, and then the, the campus factor is a really important part of being at UT. So we're ranked by Nisha as the number one best college campus in Florida and as number two best college location in Florida. Part of that's got to do with our proximity to downtown and other attractions for their benefits to our students. But part of it's also the size of the university. So it's not so big that you're overwhelmed, but it's not so small that you see the same people every day like it's high school still, right? So it kind of gives you that nice in between. It's warm all year round. And because of that, you're gonna find professors holding class outside. You'll kind of find all kinds of student events happening on campus. So there's kind of always something going on on our campus. And about 65 to 70% of our students do live on campus. So we are primarily residential, which means that you're gonna find that lively college atmosphere on campus all week, all year round. Um, it's kind of always like that at UT. So we don't empty out on the weekends or anything. You're always gonna find students here and students from all over the place. And then the other thing that I always like to talk about for UT is just the city of Tampa. Um, so we're fortunate in that we get to share the great city of Tampa with USF. And I'm sure they'll agree that it's a great city to go to college. In, you know, So the weather and ocean are of course great. Um, but the city itself also comes with a lot of perks. You kind of get all of the benefits of being in a large city and getting that everything that you want in a big market, but it's generally a little bit cleaner, it's safer, it's less populated, it's kind of easier to travel into than most cities, but you still get all that stuff that you're looking for. So you still get professional sports, concerts, nightlife, internships, job opportunities, shopping, restaurant districts, and all that's within about 10 minutes of our campus. So Tampa's a really lively city right now. We're growing really quickly and UT is fortunate to be kind of right at the heart of that activity. And there's an international airport about 10 to 15 minutes drive from our campus, depending on traffic. So really no matter wherever you're coming in from, um, it's pretty easy to get here. So especially you guys coming in from Stockton, uh, we have direct flights from Oakland and San Francisco, both I used to make it twice a week. So it's definitely doable for sure. So pretty easy to get to campus. As you guys are thinking about applying, um, we are on the Common app, we're on the Coalition app. We are also on our own institutional UT application and we are test optional and test blind this year. So you do not need to submit a test score to be admitted or considered for merit-based scholarships to the university. If you choose not to submit a test score, you're not gonna be penalized in any way for that. And it'll be that way for the next three admission cycles. So thank you guys so much for having me tonight and go Spartans. Great, thank you so much. Um, 
our next presenter for today um, will be Texas Tech University. Just a reminder, if you have questions, please feel free to drop those in the Q&A and add the institution um, to your uh, question as well. All right, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We really appreciate it. Uh, just to kind of tell you a little bit about Texas Tech University, uh, we're located in Lubbock, Texas. Uh, with that being said, uh, we have a little over 39,000 students that attend Texas Tech University. Uh, so we're very excited because this year, we actually broke a record this year um, as far as having attended or uh, students. So now at Texas Tech, we have a little over 40,322 students to name, to be exact. Um, with that being said, at Texas Tech University, um, we're super excited for the fact that um, we're still able to keep the student and teacher uh, ratio to 20 to one. Also with that being said, we are a tier one research school um, as well, so we always want students to be aware of that. Um, our average SAT score is 1171. Um, and at Lubbock, uh, the town of Lubbock, we have a little over 300,000 residents that live in Lubbock as well. With that being said, we have 10 different academic colleges at Texas Tech University. Um, with that being said, also with over 150 different majors um, that students can choose from within those 10 different colleges. Um, so we always want students to be aware of that too. Um, so also at Texas Tech University, um, when we're able to um, have all those different um, opportunities with having over 150 different majors and 10 different colleges. We also have honors college that a lot of our students uh, love to get into as well. We are definitely um, a college town at, in Texas. So we always want students to be aware of that. Um, a lot of us, all we wear is red and black. The town of uh, Lubbock actually lives and breathes for Texas Tech University. I just want students to also be aware of you are required to live on campus your first year. And then after that, you can definitely live off campus if you choose to. Uh, with that being said, we have over 150 different um, student organizations that you can actually choose from. Uh, we do also have a 242 square feet um, a lazy river um, as well on campus, which is 645 square feet with a rec center again, which is 242 square feet as well. Uh, we are part of the big 12 at Texas Tech. This year we are going uh, test optional as well. Um, so we just want students to be aware of that. There are four requirements that we're looking for as far as applying to Texas Tech is your um, application. So you can go ahead and apply through Apply Texas or the Common App. We do not prefer one over the other. Um, and then also with that being said, there's a 75 dollar application fee um, as well. And then um, if you do need an application um, fee waiver, just please let us know so we can show you the steps that you would need to take in regards to that as well. Um, also, uh, we would need your um, official transcripts, but really we just need your unofficial ones for right now. The only time you need your official transcripts is if you're uh, for scholarship opportunities or if you plan on coming to Texas Tech. Um, also with that being said, for students uh, looking to get into more of our restricted majors, which are engineering, business, interior design, and biology, uh, those are there, we're looking for um, the assured admit through um, our assured admission. So if you don't meet our assured admissions, you obviously would go through um, our application review. Again, you will have the opportunity to, if you ha happen to wanna go ahead and do uh, the test optional, uh, those students that are wanting to do the assured admit, you do have the opportunity to do a test optional as well. One thing that I do want to point out to all of you is that if you receive a $1,000 scholarship from Texas Tech University, that is where you're going to get the in-state tuition. Also, with that being said, we do have presidential scholarships as well, but those do require SAT and ACT scores. We will take SAT and ACT scores all the way up until June 1st. So we want students to be aware of that too. And we do have holistic review um, scholarships too as well for our students. Um, again, if you would like more information, please feel to reach out and you all have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thank you so much. And um, our next presenter for this evening will be Creighton University. Now hand it. 
Hi, everybody. Good evening. My name is Ann Hardy, and I'm the Associate Director of Admissions for Creighton. And welcome tonight. I know that uh, many of you may not enjoy looking at a screen anymore. <laughs> I have twin daughters that are 17 and juniors in high school, so I understand. Um, Creighton is a Jesuit school. We're located in Omaha, Nebraska. There are 20 Jesuit universities in the country, and the Jesuits are the largest order of Catholic priests. You certainly do not have to be Catholic to attend Creighton or any one of the 27 Jesuit universities. Um, but the Jesuits were founded in 1540 by St. Ignatius of Loyola and the values of the Jesuits are modest, which means more. So kind of striving for excellence and going above and beyond what's expected of you, being men and women for and with others. So sharing gifts and pursuing justice and having concern for the poor and marginalized. And cure personalis, which is care for the individual. At Creighton, we are forming and educating leaders for a more just world. We have over 140 academic programs and we truly are a liberal arts school. We want our students to be well-rounded and have um, education of the whole person is also a Jesuit value. Our student to faculty ratio is 11 to one and we get students from all 50 states and 50 different countries. 80% of our students come from out of state, which is great because we truly are a living learning community. And we have about 4,400 undergraduate students and we offer over 140 academic programs. All of our freshmen and sophomore students are required to live on campus. Our undergraduate programs are the College of Arts and Sciences, the Hyder College of Business, and the College of Nursing. Nursing is direct entry, so that is the only major that students will declare when they apply to Creighton because they start day one as a nursing student. We also have our own medical school, dental school, law school, physical therapy, occupational therapy, pharmacy, nurse practitioner, physician assistant, and a graduate program that all give preference to our undergraduate students. So for example, the acceptance rate from our undergrad into our own medical school is about 50%. If students are applying outside of Creighton undergrad, that goes down to about 6%. And then the numbers just keep going up from, from there um, from, for the other programs as well. So we definitely give preference. We are opening a second healthcare campus in Phoenix. And when that opens next year, we will be the largest healthcare, Catholic healthcare education provider in the world, which we are very excited about. We have developed an interprofessional approach to education. So it's very much a team approach, uh, when you, particularly in the health sciences, you learn how to work on that healthcare team. Research, we were voted one of the top schools in the country for research opportunities. And that is because we very purposely do not have a lot of PhD programs. We want our students, we invest in our undergraduate students. We want them to come in and engage in research right away and actually get to do the work, not just prepare the equipment for somebody else or uh, do the data entry for somebody else. But oftentimes our students are published alongside their professors before they graduate. Our Hyder College of Business is well connected in the Omaha community. Omaha was voted the number one city for paid internships. It's also home to four Fortune 500 companies with about another 50 with operations there. And we do have some um, business practicums as well at, for experiences on campus. We have an Apple store, an IJ practicum, which is 100% student run, which is really nice because students get that experience of running the store. And then we also have an investment practicum where students invest six and a half million dollars of our school's endowment. We have six chartered financial analysts on faculty at Creighton, which is more than any other business school in the world. So we're pretty excited about that. Uh, Omaha is a city of a little less than a million people. I live in Sacramento, which is where I grew up. I went to Creighton, lived in Omaha for 13 years. Omaha reminds me a lot of Sacramento, kind of the size of it and the feel of it as well. Very friendly city. We are, oh, I bet they were host of the College World Series. So that's played every year at our stadium. So a ton of fun to go to that. And our students have a lot of fun. We have over 250 clubs and organizations, which for a school our size is a lot. So we have a fraternity and sorority life as well. We pretty much have whatever it is you might want. Our, service, our students are actively engaged in service and justice opportunities, as well as campus ministry opportunities. And students of all faith backgrounds are welcome to come to Creighton and grow in their faith and share their faith with others. Certainly not a requirement that students participate in service, but because of who we are, we have students that like to engage in service. We are Division I, part of the Big East Conference, and we get over, on a typical year, 18,000 fans at every home men's basketball game. 
So being a Blue Jay fan is a lot of fun at Creighton and really important. Yeah, everybody wears blue, but you just show your student ID and you get into all home games for free. We have a very robust um, study abroad program, including our global scholars program where students spend two semesters away and two summers away. We're very proud of our student outcomes and I'm gonna kind of go through the application really quickly. We're on the Common App or the Creighton application. You can apply to either one. We went test optional last year. You do not need to submit a test score for any one of our three undergraduate colleges in order to be considered for admissions or merit scholarship opportunities. We do a holistic review of your application. Our early action deadline is coming up, but we do a rolling admissions and we will review applications as they come in. And of course you have till May 1st to decide. We are open to visitors right now. So if you wanted to visit, you could go to our website and uh, get some more information and come visit. All right, my time is up. Thank you. Thank you. And the next presenter that you will hear from is Lake Forest College. I just want to remind everyone that if you have questions to our presenters, please um, share them in the Q&A and also um, add the institution name if it's specific to a specific institution. And I'll hand it over to our colleagues from Lake Forest College. Hi, good evening, everybody. Um, so my name is Molly Noyad. I am an Associate Director of Admissions at Lake Forest College, and I am really happy to work with students from the West Coast. Lake Forest is located just 30 miles north of the city of Chicago. We are a small liberal arts college that is very literally named. So we are next to Lake Michigan, and we are in a forest. Even our football field is in a forest. About 47% of our students are out of state, with California being one of our top three largest out-of-state populations. We have 1,585 students from 43 states and 96 countries. We're quite transparent about the way that students can earn merit aid, and this is not limited to academic aid. It can also include fine arts scholarships. And we have a wonderful career placement rate of 96% within the first six months after graduating. So there are four key pillars that make Lake Forest very unique, the pragmatic liberal arts, career preparation, Chicago, and diversity. The pragmatic approach is central to who we are as an institution, so much so that we have baked it into our fundamental curriculum for all students, part of the Forrester fundamentals. So this means that it's a requirement no matter a student's major, and that can include an internship, research, study abroad, or perhaps our flagship program in downtown Chicago called Lake Forest College in the Loop. And this is a fantastic opportunity for students who are looking to do a part-time internship while they are also taking classes part-time and they get to experience living in downtown Chicago. Now Lake Forest is residential, it is suburban, guaranteed housing all four years, but if you're looking for that combination of an urban experience in the third largest city in the nation, but you also want that residential experience, and this could be a nice fit. We are incredibly career oriented. Liberal arts can mean a lot of things to many different people, but for us, it means that you are thinking critically and creatively from the very beginning about how you are going to take your transformative education and make a career out of it. So you are assigned a career advisor from the very first day of being a forester. We have 11 professional staff members in our career advancement office, which is twice the national average. Students can join one or more pathways and pathways are these pre-professional networks that you can opt into that are grouped thematically. So maybe you are opting into the business and finance pathway or the fine arts pathway. Then you are sent um, different listservs of info and events throughout the weeks and throughout the months in order to get you more involved within that pathway. And then we have various events throughout the year in non-pandemic times. We have two very large scale events in speed networking and career Palooza. Chicago, we really consider Chicago to be our second classroom and it is the third largest city in the nation. Lake Forest is just an hour long train ride away on the carbon copy of Caltrain in Northern California called the Metra. We are a 10 minute walk to the Metra station and our school sponsors over 200 trips a year into the city of Chicago and that does not even include the multitude of academic field trips that happen into Chicago. 
We are diverse in truly every sense of the word, and I love starting this off by talking about our religious diversity. No matter a student's faith coming into Lake Forest, that house of, house of worship exists within about a 15 minute drive of campus. And so it is an incredibly inclusive space um, to believe in any, any faith. Uh, we have a student body that hails from 43 states and 96 countries, 14% of our students are international, 31% are domestic students of color, and about a fourth of our students are first generation students. We also offer a variety of closed and open networks for students um, in order to facilitate greater connections within an identity group, and a great example of that would be Rainbow Network, which is our closed LGBTQ plus community, and then we also have Pride, which is our open celebratory group that allies are also welcome to join. Academically, we have over 50 different majors available. Some of our most popular majors are bio, business, communications, econ, finance, and psych. You can do two majors and a minor, two minors and a major. It's really quite easy to accomplish all of this simultaneously. We do have the option of self-design major available if students love the Lake Forest community, but they are still looking for a different um, opportunity within the departments. And then first year studies is our initial class that all students take as they join the Forester community. And through that initial class, you explore Chicago, you learn how to read write as a college student, and you get your academic advisor. Extracurricularly, our students are incredibly involved. About 50% of our student body participates in some type of sport. We have 23 D3 sports now, including lacrosse, over 80 student clubs and organizations. Some of the most popular ones are radio station, um, Relay for Life, and we also have a small but mighty Greek life population at about 20%. We are in the common application. We have three upcoming deadlines. One is coming fast and furious. November 1 is early action and ED1. ED2, EA2 is January 15th and regular decision is February 15th. If you are interested in learning more about Lake Forest, we too are open for personal visits. It would include a conversation with an admissions counselor, a coach if applicable and a campus tour. Otherwise, virtual visits are also um, readily available as well, perhaps even more readily available than on-campus visits. Um, so if you have any questions, my name is Molly and I'm the Associate Director of Admissions, International Recruitment, and my contact info is right there. Okay, thank you so much, Molly. Thanks. Um, in our next institution uh, that you'll hear from is Marymount Manhattan College. Alrighty, good evening everyone. My name is Alexis McPadden and I am the West Coast Admission Counselor for Marymount Manhattan College. I'm a 2018 alum. I double majored in business and communications while studying at Marymount um, and I will be talking about double majoring um, a little bit more as we go on in this presentation. Um, if you would like to get more information about Marymount, please feel free to scan the QR code on this page. Um, it will also be on the last page as well. So just some quick facts about Marymount. Um, we've heard from uh, Oliver, but now we're heading up to New York City. Um, we are founded in 1936 as an all-girls Catholic school. We are now a co-ed, no religious affiliation college um, located on the Upper East Side of New York City. The image behind me is our main um, entrance on campus, 71st Street between 2nd and 3rd Avenue. We have nearly 1,900 students studying at Marymount right now. So even though we are in a large city, um, we have a very small tight-knit community within Marymount. Um, students hailing from 49 states and 33 countries. Um, as I mentioned, we are a small school, so our student to faculty ratio is 11 to 1, um, and an average class size is about 15 students. So if you'd like a, a hands-on personalized education in New York City, Marymount very well could be the school for you. Um, we have 31 majors and over 45 minors for students to choose from. Double majoring, even triple majoring is allowed, um, and you can also double or triple minor as well. Um, not required, you can just have one major if that's what you want, but why not make the most of it um, if it's available. Uh, we do have two residence halls. We guarantee housing all four years. Um, it is not required to live on campus any of the years, but you can um, live on campus all four if you'd like. 82% of our first year students do live on campus. However, when you're in New York City, basically everyone's a commuter. So um, it depends on where you're coming from, but uh, we do guarantee housing. We have lots of clubs and organizations on campus, um, over 50 active clubs on campus. So there's lots of ways to get involved and you can always start a new club as well if there's not one on campus that interests you. 
As I mentioned, we have lots of majors and minors to choose from. Um, double majoring, uh, definitely encouraged, not required. Um, one story I always like to share is one of my friends, Jen, she was a dance BFA choreography concentration um, with a double major in biology. And her final project was, uh, her final uh, choreographed dance that she did was um, depicting cell division. So she was able to kind of um, combine her two majors and um, have a piece to present. Um, it's really easy to kind of collaborate between two different departments, three di different departments, if that's the case. Um, and we do allow our BFA students to double major. So um, we have amazing fine and performing arts programs here at Marymount um, and BFA students are allowed to double major if they would like to. Um, being that we are in New York City, we like to say that New York City is your campus. You're going to have the city edge if you attend Marymount um, because of our small class sizes and our four-year college, uh, college to career program. Um, being that you would be coming from the West Coast to New York City, um, all of our first year students are placed in a class called New York City 101 that's taught by an academic advisor uh, and it teaches you how to live in New York, how to go to college in New York, um, all within an academic setting. So one of our most popular classes for that um, New York City 101 seminar class is called Eating New York. Um, once a month as a class, you go around to different neighborhoods and you eat the food that's local to that neighborhood. You learn about the history and immigration patterns um, and it's all within learning how to navigate living in New York City. Um, that's a really popular one. We have lots of other uh, classes as well. Shakespeare in uh, New York, Poets in New York, um, we're within walking distance to the Met, the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Um, so lots of uh, times you'll be having classes outside of the classroom. Internships are major at Marymount. They're not required, but 95% uh, of our students do receive uh, to do uh, one internship. Sorry about that. Um, they do uh, complete at least one internship during their four years at Marymount. Um, and you can actually do up to five for credit while studying at Marymount. Important dates, stats, and requirements. We do have an early decision uh, binding deadline of November 1st that's coming up. Um, most students will apply early action and no matter which plan you choose, you'll be considered for merit scholarship. Um, we are test optional this year. Same goes for that. Whether you submit test scores or not, you will be considered for merit scholarship. And 95% of our first year students do receive merit scholarship. Um, we're a stackable school, so talent scholarships, uh, merit scholarships, and actually external scholarships as well, they can all be stacked on top of each other. Um, to give you a sense of our average student, average GPA is a 3.6, average SAT is an 1100, and average ACT is a 24. Um, we are on the Common App as well as our own Marymount Manhattan application. We need your high school transcript, one letter of recommendation, your essay, and then the $60 application fee, which uh, I'd like to share with you this evening. Our fee waiver, please feel free to use that. Um, Griffin Strong 21 with a capital G. Um, otherwise, please feel free to follow us on social media. I'm going to shamelessly plug our TikTok. My colleague Amanda and I um, run that page, um, Instagram, and we are open for tours. If you're coming to New York for whatever reason and you'd like to come to campus, um, we do have in-person tours as well as virtual options every day. Um, you can check those out on our website. And thank you all to the presenters before me and uh, thank you for joining us this evening. Yes, thank you so much. I know um, I just want to remind our attendees that if you have any questions, please feel free to um, drop those in the Q&A. And I know we do have some time um, left uh, to be able to answer your questions. Um, so as you're sending some questions to um, the Q&A, uh, I would like to uh, actually ask a question to our presenters and um, you know students really like to know um, and get a sense of the the culture and the environment um, at your institution and what better way to than to know some of the traditions that um, are so true to those those institutions so if you don't mind um, kind of sharing uh, your favorite tradition or a special tradition that's connected to your institution and we can go around the same order that um, we pres that you presented. Um, so we would start with um, Danielle um, and you can uh, share a specific uh, tradition that is um, special to your institution. 
Yep. So uh, my favorite tradition that we have at University of South Florida is going to be USF week. It's in the spring in April every year. Um, and part of the reason why it's my favorite tradition is not only do we have like a lot of sporting events, we've got talent shows, we've got lots of stuff for the students to get involved with. Um, but it's also Rocky D. Bull, our mascot's birthday. So we have on his specific birthday, it's April 4th during that week, um, we bring out this huge cake for him. We sing happy birthday to him. And then our students and Rocky fill out thank you cards to our donors throughout the year with our alumni association department. So it's pretty nice because we get to spend time with him. He's getting to hang out with the students at the same time. Everyone's getting to enjoy that time together. So that's my favorite tradition there. Yes, absolutely. Who doesn't like writing cards or receiving them? <laughs> yeah. Uh, next, uh, University of Tampa. Yeah, thank you. I'd say my favorite tradition for UT is party in the park. So it's a big student event that we hold every spring. Um, it's exactly what it sounds like. So we have a really big waterfront park that faces downtown on our campus and we'll basically close off the whole park and bring in one big name artist every year um, that the students get to vote on. So they'll get a few different options. They kind of get to vote virtually for who they want. And then we throw on a big party every year. It kind of lasts all day long. There's no classes that day. So it's kind of a fun send off for the spring semester. So students always love to be a part of it. And it kind of gives you that, that big downtown feel. So you get an outdoor concert because the weather's always beautiful. So it's the, it's the event I'd say that like every UT student goes to every year, no matter what. So it's, it's definitely the favorite tradition on campus because everybody shows up. Absolutely. Um, and Texas Tech? Yes, one of my favorite um, traditions is actually Carol of the Lights. Uh, so we invite over 20,000 students to come out to Texas Tech and over 25,000 lights are lit up around campus. So they sing carols and they have hot chocolate out there. But not only that, the big thing is they always have proposals. And last year we had nine proposals. So we're anxious to see how many will be proposed this year. Um, but that's one of them that's really exciting is Carol of the Lights. Thank you all so much for tonight. Yes. <laughs> this is always fun. Um, so in Crate. That is super cute, by the way. I love the proposal. <laughs> Uh, I think one of my favorite traditions on campus is that we are home to the mainland's biggest luau our campus is. And we get uh, probably, depending on the year, between 65 and 80 or so students from Hawaii, which for a school our size of 4,400 undergrads is a lot. And uh, so every year it's a really big deal. Our Hawaii club um, flies out a chef and a lot of families. So parents come out and a whole bunch of fresh flowers are flown out. And it's a big, huge luau of over a thousand people that attend every year. So that's a really fun, fun tradition and a fun fact about campus too, of being home to the mainland's biggest luau, <laughs> right in mm -hmm. Omaha. Yes, a thousand people. That's definitely a good turnout. <laughs> um, and Lake Forest. I love this tradition for California students in particular. Lake Forest has a week-long winter celebration called aptly named Winterfest. So there are different uh, snowy based activities. There are a lot of snowmen that are made, snow people, um, hot chocolate, um, teddy bear making, and then it culminates in a formal dance in downtown Chicago that is a real hot commodity and tickets sell out pretty quickly. Enjoying the nice winter weather. <laughs> Um, and Marymount? Yes, so um, one of the students' favorite events on campus is called Apple Fest. It's our return to campus event. Um, we have it every fall. It's a block party, lots of um, free food, lots of free things uh, to welcome all of our students back. My favorite event when I was a student at campus was our annual drag show. Um, it still happens every year, um, but that is student drag queens, um, student run, and it is a huge event. Probably besides Apple Fest, one of the biggest turnout events um, of the year. And being in New York, there's, you know, you get the theatrics of all the students. It's, it's an awesome event. Yes, it, it does uh, seem like it would be um, lots of fun. So these are just so such great traditions that I'm hearing. And I hope um, the students um, kind of get a glimpse of the type of environment, type of culture that um, they would be finding at your institution. Um, so, um, well, if there's any last minute questions, please feel free to um, drop them into the Q&A um, as I share some um, last 
last minute remarks. Um, I just want to thank our um, presenters, our panelists for their time. And then also uh, thank you for joining us. Um, when you close your window, um, you will be, um, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. And also this is just one of the many sessions being hosted. So be sure to sign up for additional sessions. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recordings as well as all other sessions that you've attended at the same website where you've served. So again, thank you for your time and I hope you have a great evening.